Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, you might notice some people laughing in the background of these episodes, and that is because this was filmed in front of a live virtual audience via Zoom. Uh, I do these shows three times a month, record them in front of a live virtual audience, uh, and you can be a part of this live virtual audience by getting tickets to one of these shows uh, where you can go get your tickets at krishmohanhaha.com. They're only $5 for one show, or you can get a multi-show pass and save uh, a, a few extra bucks. Uh, but if you become a sustaining member of this show, either on Patreon uh, or directly on my website or via PayPal or through Bandcamp, various different ways where you can become a sustaining member, you get free tickets to come to see the Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows, which eventually become episodes of Fork Full of Noodles, which is awesome. Uh, and not only that, uh, but these shows are filmed in the River's Edge studio, which is part of the River's Edge radio network. And I couldn't be thankful for uh, more thankful for being a part uh, of, of the studio. Uh, the River's Edge is your place to get local Pittsburgh music from the Pittsburgh area 24-7. Just go to the TuneIn app, download that app, and look for the River's Edge radio network. It's a 24-hour stream of independent music. The radio station is independently owned uh, and is located in Pittsburgh in the heart of Millvale. So you'll be supporting an independent local radio station. So check them out. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to the shows, if you want to become a patron, if you want to make a donation, uh, if you want to check out past episodes of this show, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Thank you very much. And now onwards to the show. One of the major privacy infringements came from Amazon's Ring, right? The doorbell camera. According to the Blue, Link, Blue Leaks, Ring gathers information about your house, your address, and sends real-time activity to any law enforcement intelli uh, or any uh, intelligence agencies as well. And this is a clear violation of the Fourth Amendment. Collecting data and spying on the American people was revealed by Edward Snowden. He, he revealed that the NSA was spying on the American people. They were collecting data. And recently, a federal court, I believe it was the Ninth Circuit Federal Court, have agreed and declared that what the NSA did was unconstitutional. So how is using advancements in doorbell technology, which literally a phrase I never <laughs> thought I'd say. That's, that's where we've come to, everybody. <laughs> BitTorrent is, is leaking po racist police information uh, and we're advancing doorbell technology. <laughs> <laughs> but how is this advancement in doorbell technology to collect data and spy on people any different than what the NSA did and not a violation of our Fourth Amendment rights? The simple answer is, it's fucking not, <laughs> right? And, and law enforcement is using the terms protecting and serving us to cover their violation of constitutional rights. But more importantly, this also shines a light on the fact that corporations are working with law enforcement and are using consumers unwillingly to do so, right? Now here's the thing, the average suburbanite who uses this technology in their houses isn't aware that Ring is sharing data with law enforcement, right? There, there, there might even be a lot of them that are perfectly fine with it, right? There, there is an overwhelming amount of people in this country that are completely fine with giving away their civil liberties in the name of safety and protection from invisible mm -hmm. enemies. But there's uh, quite a bit of people who see this as an overreach by the thin blue hands of the law. But look, we're in a pandemic right now, right? And we all need to wear masks in public, which has now rendered facial recognition <laughs> software completely obsolete. Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now this is a problem only if you're part of the Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> the DHS basically came out and said, hey, guys, look, wash your hands, you know, wear a mask, but 
can we all think about our facial recognition software for like just a little bit though, please, you know, because, because we can't use that if everybody's masked up and we really want to, we, we really <laughs> would like to just every once in a while, can you just like remove that mask and smile at the camera? Just so, just so we know, just, just so we can use our favorite toys. <laughs> now, according to the DHS, because masks render facial recognition useless, this gives criminals a larger opportunity to, you know, be criminals. And this isn't just coming out of fear, it's also coming out of absolutely no data to back up their claims. <laughs> the only claims that they do have is one white supremacist group that claimed that they can do property damage and get away with it while wearing surgical masks. They were also gonna call themselves the lab coat killers, but I decided <laughs> against it. Uh, well, because it kind of sounded like they were gonna kill doctors, right? And, <laughs> and they can't do that because in their racist minds, only white people are doctors. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know if you know this, guys, but killing white folks is very off-brand for white supremacists. <laughs> Not a part of their thing. I'm counting on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, now, the claim by the FBI is that these sort of technologies are only used to look for violence from opportunistic actors. And considering that no movies are being made right now, that makes total sense. <laughs> there are so many opportunistic actors out there, you guys. <laughs> but I don't think we should stop there. I think we should be looking out for opportunistic directors, producers, <laughs> key grips. <laughs> Look, the entertainment world is already a tough job market. And now that the FBI is onto, onto you, it, it, it's only gonna make things a lot harder. <laughs> and that has been your fork full of noodles for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you are, you're sharing this out with your friends, with your enemies, whoever you think would enjoy this show. Uh, and, and more importantly, make sure that you are subscribed, whether that you're watching this on YouTube, whether you're watching this on Facebook, listening to the audio version of this show, uh, or on rockfin.com, which is the uh, ad-free blockchain cryptocurrency site where the content creators are a part of the company. So uh, there's no censorship, there's no ads, and we're, we're all part of the family. And if you become a subscriber over at Rockfin for $10 a month, you get all of the exclusive premium content, not just for myself, but from all of the creators on Rockfin, people like Graham Elwood, Ron Placone, Kim Iverson, Jimmy Dore, a uh, ton of people that are on Rockfin. So uh, make sure you are subscribed. Uh, and once again, if you want to get tickets to these live virtual events that happen three times a month on Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Com. You can also become a sustaining member to get free tickets and additional bonus unreleased stand-up comedy and storytelling content. Uh, you can um, also make a one-time donation. Check out all of my stand-up comedy albums. Uh, keep up to date on wh when my live shows are coming out uh, and sign up for my email list. Once again, the website is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you next week. Thank you.